can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cute. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. The Olympics are underway and we can all enjoy the thrill of watching the games. And one Brookfield native has had an up close seat in four Olympics and his talent has earned him another major assignment this year. I covered the 2012 London Olympics on beach volleyball for NBC Sports. And then I covered the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympics with NBC Sports. That's the one where I got my first Emmy. And then the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. And I just did the 2020 and 2021 Summer Olympics in Tokyo on beach volleyball. Brookfield native John Weinsheim has covered four Olympics. What has been the most challenging Olympics that you've had to do over the few, last few years? Oh, it was definitely yeah. Tokyo. Tokyo and Pyeongchang. Pyeongchang for the ultimate in cold uh, with uh, negative 10 with 50 mile an hour winds to make it like negative 28 wind chill or something like that. And Weinchime got all the weather extremes while working the games. And then the other one was the complete opposite of that. The Tokyo Summer Olympics on beach volleyball where oh, I was yeah. sitting in the sand. Some days it was recorded 135 degrees. So it was with 95% humidity. I mean, this oh. is, it was literally like you get heat stroke by, by the end of the first match and you'd have to do three matches in a row. And it was just amazing, the, the heat. This camera operator has had some incredible assignments. One of his favorite, Deal or no deal with uh, Howie Mandel and all the girls on the pyramid. John has done a variety of shoots, but he thrives on competitive action. How difficult is it to be a sports photographer? Do you ever worry about missing things? Because I would be scared to death. Being able to follow the, the ball or puck or the football, whatever you're doing, uh, and it's, it all comes uh, through time. But sometimes the job can be hazardous, like trying to get a shot from the basketball court. Kevin Durant slammed me from uh, Golden State Warriors, and Draymond Green gave me a concussion for a month and a half uh, when he put his knee into my head. This four-time Emmy winner has enjoyed a lot of pum gigs. <laughs> That's video wine chime filmed of the rock band Kiss, here he is with actress Charlize Theron, basketball star LeBron James, legendary singer Tony Bennett, gold medalist April Ross and Jen Kessie, Olympic gold medal winner Lindsey Vonn. Here's John with NBA coach Doc Rivers at the 2012 Olympics with Mike Trout of the Angels. And a picture of Weinsheim at the 2019 Democratic presidential debate and shooting baseball star Mookie Betts. I'm a complete freelancer. I work for uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, ESPN, Discovery, Travel Channel. You know, just keep naming them off, uh, TNT. And after 34 years in the business, Wine Chime can pretty much choose his assignments. He was asked to go to the Olympics in Beijing, but John admits COVID protocols were just too much. What I was told is that you had to quarantine in a hotel for the two weeks that you'd have to be there before you could even step outside and go to your event. And I just didn't think I could pull that off. So instead of the Olympics, John Weinchime was invited to another huge job. He will be covering the 2022 Super Bowl for NBC. I don't know yet. I'm not, I don't know what my assignment's going to be yet, but uh, I'm on the uh, schedule for uh, January 6th through the 13th at the SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, the City of Champions. Not bad for a guy who admits he got his start doing whatever he was told when he was a UWM student working for Milwaukee's PBS station more than three decades ago. It's not a job, it's an adventure. <laughs> what an exciting life. Now, John does know that security clearance at the Super Bowl will be intense, but he is looking forward to covering the big game. But of course, like the rest of us, he is not happy. The Packers will not be there. Stay tuned after the break for more great stories, including one about a former police officer helping people going through hard times. Plus, you'll meet some young people who might be the future of America's dairy land. But before we go, don't forget lunch with me every Wednesday at 1230 on Facebook Live. I chat with someone doing good in the community, who inspires, who is truly positively Milwaukee. 
Recently, I sat down with Amy Taylor. You might recognize her from her days at TMJ4 as an anchor. We had a great time talking about how she's raising money for sick kids. Join me every week for wonderful guests and feel free to leave your comments. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is so important not to give up when faced with life's obstacles. What's even better is being able to help others overcome those obstacles. Andrea Albers spoke to a former police officer using his experience to help others all over the country. It was actually my first call of the day. It was July 19th, 2019. It was one of the hottest days ever. A traumatic spinal injury while on the job left West Allis police officer Ryan Kendall paralyzed. At age 37, he was told he'd never walk again unassisted. I'm very, very determined, and I tried everything, everything in my power to get back to the job that I love, um, because being a police officer was everything to me. He's learned it's okay not to be okay. And now Ryan is sharing that message with other first responders who've been sidelined. His nonprofit, Injured Sheepdogs, offers resources for physical and mental health, substance abuse, and PTSD nationwide. Sounds great, but I went through a really dark time. <laughs> After spinal surgeries and months of intense physical therapy, Ryan was walking again with the help of a brace. But the day he realized he would never again wear a badge, something inside of him broke. And I came home and I turned on music and um, I put notes on every window um, for my girls but to not come inside, just call the police. And um, I literally had my Glock in my mouth and I was, I was ready to do it. Photos of his wife and two daughters, his girls as he calls them, stopped him. So I immediately threw away every bullet that I had and um, I said, I, I need help. Before he ever picked up the gun, Ryan did reach out to two crisis agencies, but says they never got back to him. That's why Injured Sheepdogs was born. The phone line is available 24 seven and confidential. And it's not a 1-800 number. If you call, Ryan's voice will be on the other end. If I'd had that, I wouldn't have had to go through that. And that's the biggest point with Injured Sheepdogs is we don't want anyone to suffer in silence. Ryan knew he couldn't help anyone until he'd helped himself. He spent a lot of time with a therapist who now has joined Injured Sheepdogs and its mission. It's like literally talking to a brother at lunch or something like that. Um, and he got me through some hard, hard times. Since he was a little boy, it was Ryan's dream to be a police officer. Today, his eyes have opened to a new calling. Would you say it's a second purpose, a second passion? Um, I, I would say it is, it is my purpose. So obviously God had a plan for me. What an amazing story. Now Ryan says the name injured sheepdogs comes from a term popular in the police and military. He says a sheepdog protects the flock no matter the cost. People with intellectual and de developmental disabilities don't always get the same opportunities as others, but an organization called Journey 21 partnered with the Arrowhead High School boys basketball team to try and change that. Lance Allen tells us about a camp that all the players will remember forever. What we've seen since this started back in July that our young adults are developing their confidence and they're developing social skills and it's all, it's all organic because they're, they're interacting with their peers. Honestly, for our players and our staff, it was the best thing that we have ever done. I've been coaching for 22 years. It was the best experience for everybody involved. The smiles on the faces of our players, the smiles on the faces of the adults from Journey 21, the smiles on the faces from the staff, uh, spoke volumes to how it impacted everybody in such a positive way. As a basketball coach, what more can you learn about life than through the sport of basketball? And Craig has ran camps. I've run camps. And I thought, what a great opportunity for our adults to learn from the high school students and vice versa. And each person involved in the camp have specific snapshots of the joy it provides the athletes. For me, it's announcing them 
in the starting lineup and going through the tunnel, high-fiving the varsity players and being recognized as a member of a team and the smile and the pure joy that they have, I'll remember always. The player actually recognizing that the basketball boys are cheering for them and yes. the smile on their face and the self-confidence and the, you know, the satisfaction they have of being able to play. Everybody brings value and everybody can get better. And our players, I know, learned both of those things. What a wonderful message. Now, the staff had a cap enrollment at 30. That was double what they had last year. In fact, the event is so popular, they easily could have had 40 players. Way to go. They call Wisconsin America's Dairyland, but we do need young farmers to take over if we want to hold on to that nickname. Julia Fellow has more from students in Kewaskum who are getting a head start on the future. High schoolers Adriana Cherubini and Sam Fisher feel right at home feeding a baby calf inside Kewaskum High School. I want to be able to run cattle, but then also manage a herd. You want to get the door for me? Yep. Through the school's career pathway program. Come on, girl. 17-year-old Cherubini has hands-on experience through a paid internship on this 100-cow dairy farm. It is just minutes from her school. The egg department has helped me like see what I want to do, and I'll be able to get there and be the first generation of it. David Leto is the third generation farm owner. It helps us out because we need the help part time because we're a smaller farm. Leto took a similar path as Adriana when he went to Kewaskum High School. He believes it helps everyone build a strong work ethic. Weekends, holidays, Adriana came Christmas morning. She knew it had to get done. Fresh cow, she's going to need to be marked for breeding later. Okay. Milk the cows and then we go home. Her classmate Sam cannot wait to teach ag someday as she looks up to her teacher, Ms. Eohoffen. To be the full size plants in about 25 days. Compared to planting them in soil, we would be waiting about 40 to 50 days. It's cool that there's like new innovations like the hydroponics that allows us to grow them in like half the time. I don't think people realize how many different ways that you can be involved in agriculture and I think part of the reason I want to be a teacher is just to be the voice for that. A full circle moment for Ms. Eohoffen. My agriculture te teacher at that time, he's the reason that I am now the teacher here today because he encouraged me to go back to school. Which shows why nurturing our next generation is vital in creating more farms in America's Dairyland. It is, and the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture says we lost nearly 20% of our dairy farms in the last three years, so we really do applaud these young people for keeping our traditions and our industries alive. Black History Month is in full swing, and we're celebrating diverse voices. After the break, we're going to show you a free exhibit, but first, we're going to meet our Positively Milwaukee Pet of the Week. Hi, I'm Johanna with Haws. Today I'm joined by my adoptable friend, Larry. He is one of our awesome senior cats. He is just a friendly guy. He likes to be held, he likes to be brushed. Larry would do best in a calm home, potentially with another cat who meets his energy. A dog would probably be a little bit too much for him. He is just the sweetest, sweetest old guy. He's a companion, he likes to sit on your lap, he likes to be Pet. and he also still has an explorative nature despite being 12 years old. If you'd like more information about adopting Larry or any of our other Positively Milwaukee animals here at Paws, please check out pawspets.org or give us a call at 262-542-8851 and find out what other animals we have who are Positively Milwaukee. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. There is always something new to check out at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. This month, the galleries are celebrating Black History Month. Mary Jo Ola gives us a sneak peek. Our featured artist is Sandra Bridges. This season, one exhibit is called Presence and Persistence, Visions of American Blackness. Brad Anthony Bender is an associate professor of art at Myad and one of the people who curated the exhibit. For people that don't understand what the black experience is, um, they think it was back then. Um, this is to let you know it was back then and it's still now. Presence and Persistence spotlights artists from Milwaukee, Madison, Chicago, and Atlanta, expressing different points of the black experience. The exhibit includes a collection of books, references, artifacts, and other materials that Bender says fills in the gaps of black American history. And so I think people need to walk away being better informed 
um, having a better understanding of uh, generational dysfunction due to different oppressions. A few steps away is the Great Ideas of Humanity Posters for Thought exhibit. These are the original posters. The traveling program comes from the Design Museum of Chicago and offers a more contemporary and diverse take on a famous ad campaign that began in the 1950s. Director of Galleries Mark Lawson says the original campaign by the Container Corporation of America featured books and quotes from Western thinkers. So it's a nice mixture of the two and people can think about the difference and how our American culture has embraced diversity much more than was so back in the 1950s. It kind of shows the change, the change culture we live in. Both exhibits will host special events during their run until early March. And those galleries are open to the public free of charge. We do have more information on the dates and times. Just go to tmj4.com. Students all over our area are celebrating National Catholic Schools Week, and the students at St. Vincent Pilate went big. Elaine Rojas Castillo explains why they made hundreds of sandwiches. From the youngest kindergartner to the eighth grader, tables lined the school gym, filled with eager volunteers ready to make delicious meals for those in need. And for students like Stefan Felton Jackson, knowing that he's able to do something for so many people who could use a helping hand makes him feel great paying forward all the blessings he's been given in his life. It's a really good thing helping out the homeless and people who don't have food because it's like a lot of people out there who don't like have food and stuff. So like our school making all these sandwiches, 500 sandwiches for the homeless and people who have food is good. And the students and staff who participated in that sandwich making effort say it's just a small part of giving back during Catholic Schools Week. Good to see young people supporting their communities and learning a lesson of a lifetime. Valentine's Day just over a week away and many people in love are hoping for a token of affection from that special someone. So we asked you, what's the best Valentine's Day gift? A nice dinner out yeah. and a movie. That's our anniversary, so it's uh, uh, usually a combo. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we first started dating, I came to my apartment and he had put flowers and balloons all over the place. Well, I just got divorced, so I don't know. Nature? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time by yourself, meditation. Roses, of course, yes. But I always told my husband, because my birthday's on Valentine's Day, I said, you cannot, you cannot buy me roses because they're too expensive. <laughs> you can buy them the day before or the day after, but not on that day. Chocolates and kisses and hearts. A massage, couples massage maybe? I would always just go with like a big stuffed animal, you know, it's always the go-to. You can't go wrong with a good four or five foot stuffed bear, so that's what I would go to. Stuffed fish maybe? Yeah, maybe a stuffed, maybe, that's her present to me though, I feel like, yeah, yeah. Fountain pens. We both like to write letters. <laughs> oh, that's so? really sweet, love letters for each other. That no too, yes. Probably something homemade. My kids have made me uh, homemade uh, pictures that still hang on my wall for Valentine's Day, which is great. Well, my wife likes Josh Groban, so I got tickets this morning. I'm not into Josh Groban, but um, for her, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great ideas. Now, I do like Josh Groban. Now, anything for the one you love, that's a true sign of romance. But, of course, you really can't go wrong with chocolate. If you do have memories of a holiday you want to share or a question you want us to ask next week, go to our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group. We'd love to hear from you. And if you still need a few ideas for a special Valentine's Day gift, don't worry, because we've got you covered with some options that are Positively Milwaukee. The Milwaukee County Zoo is offering special Valentine's Day gifts for that awesome person. Okay, awesome person in your life. Sorry about that. Send a virtual Valentine with a customized greeting featuring your loved one's favorite zoo animal. Tell that special someone you love them so much with a video from a sloth. Or maybe have a red panda tell your partner that you'll love them forever. A lot of cute options for your loved one. <laughs> Now, the Milwaukee County Zoo is also offering another option. This one is Foxy. For 50 bucks, you can sponsor one of the zoo's fennec foxes for an entire year. Now, the foxes will get the love and care they need. They are cute, aren't they? Now, you'll get a sweet Valentine's Day package, and it includes a certificate of a plush fennec fox, a solid chocolate heart, and an exclusive invite to future zoo events. Now, that sounds like a wonderful Valentine's Day gift. And who doesn't want something sweet to eat? The Wisconsin State Fair will be selling strawberry and cocoa cream puffs 
just in time for the holiday. You can drive through the park between February 11th and 14th and pick up those tasty treats. And you really are better to, best bet is to pre-order your cream puffs. That way you'll know they are still available. And we do have one more food item to show you, but you really can't eat this one. This type of ice formation is called pancake ice. It only forms when cold water temperatures are hit with high waves. You have to have just the right weather conditions for these. They're pretty rare, so we want to thank Sheila Semro for sharing us these lovely pictures. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. You wouldn't worry so much about what others think of you if you realized how seldom they do. Our quote of the week today comes from Eleanor Roosevelt. Roosevelt was the wife of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, but she was well known for being more than just a first lady. She was a vocal supporter of civil rights for African Americans and Asian American people. She fought for expanded workplace roles for women. The first lady was often at odds with her husband's policies, and back then, she was criticized for being so outspoken. However, Eleanor Roosevelt did not care what people thought of her. She just did what she thought was right. And remember, it does not always matter what people think about you as long as you do what you think is right by your community. And you'll be positively Milwaukee. Have a great week.